Chris, you had to deal with some injuries in your career, including <laughs> a brief cardiac arrest in 98 during the playoffs after a puck hit you in the chest. Can you talk about like what goes in player's head when he can't play? Um, I don't think people really understand how it feels to get injured in a contact sport, especially a sport like hockey where, I mean, let's be honest, you know, 90% of the time in hockey, when you get injured in contact sports, it's kind of out of your control, right? Yeah. So, you know, what was that like? And, and, and just kind of explain of what it's like to be injured when you can't play. Yeah, I was never, I mean, I, I think that that's why I played injured so often is yeah. I was never one of, you know, there's lots of guys in the league that they only play when they're hundred percent. Yes. I was never one of those guys. I just, you know, I was paid to play and in my head, it's mind over matter. And you go out and play the game to the best of your abilities. Sometimes you're limited in what you can and can't do depending upon what's injured. But, uh, you know, I hate, I just hated watching, knowing you could impact the game in some fashion, um, you know, be a part of the success of the team when you're sitting up in the press box or up in a box watching the game. It's just, it's just not the same. You you don't have the same impact on your teammates. You, you know, you, you, in order to say something, you feel like you got to be on the ice and be a part of the battles and, and be a part of all the emotion that takes place. And um, you know, it's hard for a guy, you know, especially when I was in Philly and I got hurt and was done, they always wanted me to come around the room and I'm like, well, what do you want me to say? I can't go I out and show you. I can't go out and do it. It's just, you know, in my view, talk is cheap. I mean, there's certain guys that you, you will listen to and you'll hear it, but if it's for an extended period of time and they're not playing, you're like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It just, it's in one ear and out the other because it, they're not around enough to, to really be a part of what's taking place within the locker room and then on the ice. It's, it's the most frustrating. And you know what really pisses me off, Prongs? Is, you know, I've gone through times in my career where I was just like you at the start of my career. It was like about Iron Man. I was like, I want to play. I want to be the Iron Man player in the league to play as many games without missing one game. And I think I got to like 360 games. And then my last year in Montreal, I get a neck injury. I get stretchered off the ice and people were giving it to me like you. You're not. And I'm like, do you know how many do you know how many games i played in this league banged up injured where i should i could have easily sat out and didn't play so i'm with you man uh prongs listen one of my favorite times of watching you play was when you played in edmonton and you signed that five i think it was a five-year deal 31 million bucks it yeah. was and you played in edmonton you guys had an amazing run you were just so dominant and as a defenseman to see a player be the MVP of his team and be dominant like that. I was like, man, I want that. Like, I want to be that guy. I want, I I'm seeing it. I know it can be done. I want to be that guy. But then all of a sudden you weren't in Edmonton. Like what happened? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I want to be this guy. I'm like, he's in the right situation. And then you're not there anymore. And I'm like, Damn it. This is the only reason why I watched the Edmonton Oilers after Wayne Gretzky <laughs> left. I, I didn't really have any issue. Like I was like, I don't need to watch Edmonton. Like Wayne's not there. Cro Prongs is there. He's dominating. Now he's not. Well, I had to go to Anaheim and win a cup. <laughs> well, okay. And you know what? We're going to get into that too, because after the Oilers, yeah, you came to the Ducks. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about your Stanley cup experience with Anaheim because you know, I'm a guy Prongs, you know, I've won a Norris. Uh, you know, I've been on the Olympic team. I've won a gold medal. I've been up for a Norris a few times, you know, captain of the all-star team. Who cares, right? I, I've never won a Stanley Cup. And, you know, I've gotten close. I've been there. I haven't won one. And it took you some time to get one. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not the young guys that get there, like that year we won in Anaheim, get slapped was yes. 21. Was 21. Yes. They think they're going to go back there every year. They haven't been back since. I know. Even even to the finals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. it's not as easy as uh, as you know. You look at some players and they're you know they're valuable parts of the team, but they're you know third and fourth liners. 
They're a big part of the team, but they're not star players making or breaking that team. And they got four or five, six cups. And you're like, I get it. Yeah, you, you played a role and it was valuable to that team, but you're an interchangeable part. Mm-hmm. You look at the years we, we had in St. Louis where we're playing Detroit and they got seven Hall of Famers on their team. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it, it's, uh, you know, that can be frustrating when you get get a part of that conversation where it's, well, I just never want to come. Ray Bork, look how long it took him to win. And he had to I go know. to Colorado. You know, so it it that that part really frustrated me, you know, and then I had a great opportunity in, in Edmonton. You know, we lose in game seven and then uh, and then ultimately get traded Anaheim. And you know, that that's the one thing with that team that was truly remarkable. Every single player in the locker room, including Scotty, who had already gotten three. Yep. It was Stanley Cup or bust. The yeah. only thing we ever talked about was the Stanley Cup. It wasn't about getting first in uh, the conference, first in our division. Nothing had to do with the regular season. Yeah, we wanted to win, but we need to win the Cup. And when everybody is of that same mindset, it, it's crazy what you're able to do. Oh, it's uh, it gives me chills to hear you speak like that, man. Like I, you know, I it's like watching the playoffs right now. I, I. I'd give my left nut prongs to to have a chance at, to lift that thing. <laughs> Speaking of Stanley Cups, there's a rumor that you lift the Stanley Cup weighs 35 pounds, and you lifted it with a separated shoulder. Is that true? Yes, sir. Yeah, wow. I uh, I separated my shoulder about halfway through the first period in Game Five, oh. and uh, I got it shot up. I think I came back and played a couple shifts at the end of the first. And then, uh, yeah, and actually the, the, the numbing was, was wearing off by the time the game was over. And yeah, I, I literally had to just kind of throw it up like that. Cause I couldn't press it up. My shoulder kept popping out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so once hey. I got it up there, if you look at the video of Robbie handing it to me, and then I know I'm going to give it to Tamu. I literally, I got it up. I look at the media, the camera guys, couple pictures and I'm like, give it to Tamu. I'm like, I, I can't hold this thing no more. Well, hold on. <laughs> Once you got it up over your head, what was it like passing it to Tamu? Like, what was that like? You know, I think, you know, he's such a great guy. We had our battles yeah. through the years and, yeah. um, you know, it was just, you know, he's doing his job. I'm doing my job. And then when I got there, you know, my brother had already played with him. So I knew him a little bit and, uh, you know, he's such a great guy, so passionate, um, you know, plays harder, I think, than people realize uh, because he's such a goal scorer and such a great skater. Um, you know, it was, you know, almost uh, one, you know, a movie, movie script, the way it goes for me to him with all the drama that had ensued over the years between me and him and and the emotion and the electricity and you know, I think being able to hand it off to him was kind of a culmination, I think, for Berkey. Okay, it worked. The trade worked. And here, here's the guy that I brought in, giving it to, to Tamu. You know, kind of solidified his history with the Ducks and everything that he'd accomplished in Anaheim. Um, you know, so I think it was, you know, just a, a storybook ending the way the way that that part of the, uh, the year finished off for us. Would it be safe to say that that was the most special moment for you in the playoffs? Like, what was that most... That playoff in particular, what was the most special playoff moment for you? Um, you know, I think I, I, I think Tamu scoring the overtime goal against Detroit in game five. We really? had played terrible. Jiggy was first star and yeah. was outstanding. And we just kind of hung around, hung around, hung around. Scotty scored a late goal to tie it, I think. And then... You know, uh, Andy Mack stripped, uh, I think, Andreas Lilia and Tamu got it. I don't know what Hashik was doing, but <laughs> he gave a quick move and Hashik was over getting his jock in the corner. <laughs> you know what, Brogs? This is what I love. You know, I have such an appreciation for guys that have played the game before me. Because I don't think you realize how fun it is for me to hear you talk about stories and just casually throw out, like, I don't know what Dominic Hasek was doing on that play. Like, a <laughs> Hall of Fame, like, <laughs> top three best goaltender of all time. Okay. <laughs>